What's going on guys? Sir Wayne here. And today I'm going to talk about the overall of act or overall doctrines as well as the overall state of the game and how I feel about things. Um and so basically what is the probably the last two of the doctrines, last two doctrines it would be a tie between axes and common turn as I feel like they are the worst doctrines to pick and i i hear you i understand don't blow me up in the comments and say uh, this and that and this and that well i've played i've played as axes i've played as common turn and it's not neither that they're bad and essentially it's that they're not as good overall as compared to the other doctrines okay and i can't really say which is worse the ally axes or the common turn especially i can't really say the common turn because I haven't played with them very much, and I feel like the common turn. Oh, sorry about that. I feel like the common turn can pump out a whole lot of troops, while the axes really struggle with resources and stuff, and you know, upgrading their stuff, and their troop counts is far lower usually. So, uh, I feel like they're at a significant disadvantage in that, as far as troop counts and everything, and they have to make up, and. They really don't have, uh, in my, my opinion, the, the superior troops. Like, they may have superior tanks and such, medium tanks, and the armor divisions, right? But when it comes down to it, they don't really, like, if they were facing the common turn, they don't have, like, any boost for attacks. They do have a boost for attack bombers, but they can't field the numbers as, as like, allies could or pan asia could you know so or and as well as common turn common turn can just i know they can they can just spam level one or level two units and i know level one ain't that all big of a deal but if you span level twos and level threes that's getting you somewhere that's getting you somewhere so and even their disadvantages won't you know their 10 percent disadvantage is not gonna do anything so my, you know so like either you know Axes or common turn can be third or fourth. Mm, I mean, I played all of them. I really kind of feel like axes is the worst, but they can they can have so much fun with the medium tanks and motorized infantry. So much fun, and that freaking attack bomber is a Ju J U A D J U something Swuka dive bomber. It's that image, so it looks sweet artwork. It is awesome looking. Anyway, so. Uh, I feel like those are tied for last, or tied for last, essentially. Uh, maybe common turn has a little bit more edge. I guess axis would be last. But anyway, so moving on, Pan Asia would be my second pick. As they are super strong in the air. They got the best fighters in the game. They got great the best naval bombers in the game. They have good navy, best battleship in the game. Uh, they are superior in the air and superior in the water. Okay, and the reason why they're not number one would probably be because of the fact that they don't have any armored units, any good armor. Uh, they really lack in the department of the land. Okay, so, and, uh, like, but they do have good artillery. They had, do have good infantry, but all slower units. And it's weird because Pan-Asia is always going to be on the 50 map, pack 50, or the 100 maps, the bigger maps, the larger maps. So, why they have these better infantry i mean i get for histor historical reasons japan had you know you know that whole really good infantry and didn't have good armor in history you know during world war ii so i get that but they're only on the big maps <laughs> so they're not really you know those they're, those small infantry units are very very slow so but there's nonetheless it's still one of the very best uh, doctrines and then the very best doctrine in my opinion would be allies because their production time 30 percent off the top they get th getting it out at 70 percent instead of having to wait the 100 percent research cost and time 25 percent and then upgrade cost and time 20 percent that is huge and they lose speed Ooh, 10 percent Ooh, who cares if you have a level three tank going against a level one tank of your opponent I guarantee you, yours is stronger and yours is faster. 
Doesn't matter if they lost at speed or not. You're going to have allies that's going to have these highly upgraded units where somebody like Axes is going to be struggling to field those units, going to be struggling to, you know, put out those highly upgraded units. And if they're trying to upgrade, if you're Axis and trying to upgrade stuff, oh, whew, you're in for it. You are in for it. You are just, I mean, I, here, here, if you're Axis, this is how it is. If you're Axis, you're always broke. <laughs> always broke. <laughs> so, uh, in common turn, common turn seems to always be filled in those level ones and maybe level twos, you know, of all their units. They just spam them out and they have a whole bunch of them. Cool, we got you. You have a lot of units. We got you. And they may have, I'm not saying they may not have their level threes and level fours of one unit or two units or or whatever, but the majority of their troops are level ones or level twos in that area. Uh, especially mid-game. That's what it is, you know? So, uh, but anyway, so allies comes in and they have good numbers too. They're not axis. They have good numbers too except they're upgraded. So they're really the superior ones, not the axes. And then when they're playing against the, the common turn doctrine, they have, you know, they don't have superior numbers usually, but they have, you know, those upgraded troops. They have level three, level four tanks, stuff like that. They don't have, you know, level one, level two tanks, and they outdo them, generally speaking, in that sense. But, uh, and now this is all just the overall doctrines. This is my view as overall doctrines. And I believe it all to be pretty, pretty, it's all pretty factual. This is just, I've played as all of them. Uh, I have the most experience with allies, uh, as well as Axis and Pan-Asia. Uh, I have played not much of Common Turn, but I have had people who do play it and do that they do run each of these doctrines and they do run them very well. Uh, shout out to you, Jake, for running common turn very well. Anyway, so uh, uh, moving on to what is next. So we're going to load the game up, talk about um, e basically not each individual stats, but basically what rules the game and what doesn't. So a lot of people in the game think tanks are the way to go. Let's go smash in the tanks. No, they're not. Tanks is not the way to go. Tanks is one of the least efficient, you know. So shout out to you Pan Asia playing it, Pan Asia players who don't need these tanks. So um, or good tanks. So basically, the way tanks are used for is sticking them in the stacks like that, and their health means something. Sticking them in the stacks like that. I got one there. I got two there. Um, and then another way is sticking them like that. Or here's a better example, a pair like this, uh, where if you were going to be outflanked, let's say when we start the invasion and attack here, this troop down here starts rolling down here or right here, we at the end point can use these, uh, these armor divisions to smash into them and cut them off and destroy them. There's another way to actually use this, which is called air power using your attack tactical bombers using your attack bombers and just wiping them out uh, they're really good with the tactical bombers because they have such good range uh, but so you don't really need that but unfortunately i don't have a type uh, ta tactical bombers right now i focus more on uh, getting my fighters out at, and at super high level uh, so but i do have it researching uh let's see here oh oh it's done so what we want to do at this point is start researching these tactical bombers, getting those suckers out there. Um, and I feel like um, that they, these are the best ways to use tanks. It's just putting them in the stacks. And if you need to split them up to send them somewhere, then that's fine. But usually send them like this where they have no anti-air whatsoever, which you can see I'm building anti-air. I'm upgrading that one right now, trying to get the max I can. 
Uh, but my stacks do have good anti-air, as you can see, and I do have fighters. So, I, you know, at this stage of the game, me being in Romania, I have good anti-air and good fighters uh, to hopefully deal with anything the Russians have. But what really is, like, the strongest of the strong, what's really good is artillery, being able to do damage on your opponent. And as you can see, I can do it to do free damage on your opponent, not take any, which is really good in the bigger maps, 100s and such, where you're just dealing the damage, not taking it, and you're able to uh, get ahead of everybody else without losing anything versus everybody else taking losses, taking damage. And uh, later on, you know, if you find yourself day 15 with only 50 to 100 divisions or something like that, you're falling behind, buddy. You're falling behind. You need more troops. Now, if you're a common turn, you could just lose 300 divisions. No problem. We just make it back in like 10 seconds. <laughs> All right, maybe not 10 seconds. But I'm just saying, I'm making fun of common turns to just be able to pump out this infinite amount of troops, which is super fun, super cool. But I have a KD to worry about. So, And I think I'm going to play common turns some more. I'm going to actually play them some more after I'm done with these Axis game and experiment a little bit more with common turn and see if I can't find something more. I'll talk to my buddy Jake about um, some, some tips and some pointers. What's his feel about it as he's been playing it forever and that's his main, uh, that's his go to is common turn but i'm just kind of bored of allies uh next in would be um the probably the best thing in the game is air i mean it is the best thing in the game there's it, it, it can win or break you and this is this is it's plain and simple if you can't control the air you lose like, you can't have tactical bombers and attack bombers just hovering over your stuff. You will lose. And it doesn't matter how much anti-air you have. Really, it really doesn't. Because they can wipe you out. If their air is big enough, they can wipe you out. And it don't matter how good your anti-air is. What matters is, is, you know, the anti-air mixed with your air. Use it to your advantage. You want to crush their air. And I have some videos on how to knock people's air out and how to have maintain air superiority and win versus the ground versus with the with the air now for the most part you're um for the most part if you have good anti-air a lot of times if they have air they won't bother it they won't bother your stacks with good anti-air generally now sometimes they will they'll be like i gotta i gotta take out the stack i gotta take it out i ain't got nothing else i got this air i gotta take it out and they use that air to wipe out your stack. So you have to figure out a way to deal with their air before they're able to wipe out your stack. Uh, but here's the downside to air is these bigger maps, when your air takes damage and stuff, you were losing your, you know, that's your big, that's your big cookie, you know, your air force. That's your big strength, right? You just knocked it down a peg. If you had three 10 stacks or five 10 stacks, right five different squadrons right or three different squadrons if three of those squadrons just are down to like 40 percent health because you've been fighting this guy and he's got good anti-air he's got good fighters whatever it is and he's just been kicking your butt essentially so and let's say you only have two 20 stacks or two 10 stacks sorry left right because you lost essentially your three uh, th hope I ain't losing you here. Your three stacks of 10 were da damaged, right? Heavily damaged, not usable. That's what I'm trying to say, essentially, right? They're too far damaged. The other two stacks of 10 are still good. Well, if you, let's say, let's say those stacks are filled with five tactical bombers, five attack bombers each, right? So you don't have any fighters, okay? So the next war comes, right? And as usual, you know, this is going to happen all the time. If you're not prepared, you're not prepared. It is what it is. You lost too many fighters. You lost 30 planes, essentially, even though you didn't lose them. They're heavily damaged. And, you know, uh, the next guy comes. He's got 40 planes. Or he's got 30 planes. Whatever it is, right? Let's say he's got 30, 40 planes. Let's say 40 planes. Let's say he's got 40 planes. Uh, so he's got four stacks, right? So... 
see you're automatically at an air superiority disadvantage because an air disadvantage because he has 40 you have 20 ready to rock and roll you're out number two to one when you could have been if you had been using your air correctly or may maybe you had maybe you had maybe you you just you know the guy was good or whatnot and you just lost your you know you lost your butt off you went to sleep whatever whatever it was whatever the deal was i don't know i don't care but my point being that's the air weakness you fought somebody before you used your air it was damaged it was destroyed the next guy comes along you're at a two of one disadvantage see what i'm saying that's the problem with air and as you fight these big 100s you have a war after a war after a war after a war so there are times i fight five six different people fight three different coalitions so and there are times where you fight those coalitions it's three on one or five on three or whatever the disadvantage is you want that air so what i do is i hold my air as long as i possibly can unless i can get a, a significant like advantage from using my air at that point in time i try not to use it now i'm not, not talking about strategic bombers strategic bombers are gamblers trying to knock out the airstrips yeah, we don't care about that. We're talking about our core air units, our fighters, our tactical bombers, and our attack bombers. Oops, sorry about that. My screen went dead while I'm blabbering. Um, so that's pretty much it. If you if you have the air, you win. Essentially, you're fighting. If you don't have the air superiority, you're fighting from a disadvantage. Now you have to get that advantage. But this whole thing of build the biggest tanks you can do and be like Hitler, you know, building these massive tanks and sending them on the roll and watching this air power just blow them up. Hey, thanks for the kills, my man. Appreciate the kills. Next time you'll build air, air you know, let me know, you know, if I'm wrong here. But I know, man, as much as I played, this is how it is. This is how the game is every single time. And uh, if you've been the guy... I know I have been the guy. I had my first game, my first couple games, I built a whole bunch of light tanks, you know, and I'm like, this is a way to go. I'm gonna build a whole bunch of light tanks, and I just got wiped out by these this air force, you know, this good artillery, this rail or you know, I think the guy had some rail guns, but they're not as good anymore. But anyway, so tell me what you guys think. Uh, have you guys had your you know butts kicked because you had these light tanks or these tanks heavy tanks whatever medium tanks just tank destroyers and just going at it alone crushing into the enemies trying to give them damage and then you got the air coming over and just wiping your units out this, this i know there's one way call of war or there's military you know how war worked and then there's the game of call of war it's not one and the same you don't have supply lines either. That'd be really cool if they put supply lines in here. It'd be really cool to cut somebody off and then watch their health and stuff, you know, deteriorate because they're cut off. That'd be really cool. But anyway, uh, thanks a lot, guys, for the, vi for the view viewing. And remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And just let me know what you guys think um, of the state of the game. I feel like I'm correct on this. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm right. Tell me something. Whatever you want to do. Thank you guys so much.